Our final session of day one focuses on what is arguably the hottest topic of supply chain conversation right now, at least in Europe. The road transport industry faces multi-pronged challenges, and while many of these have been on the industry's agenda for some time, issues such as the hundreds of thousands of driver shortages in Europe are now gaining headlines on a daily basis, visible as consumers face longer lead times for deliveries as well as product shortages. While fixing this is, of course, a priority, it's far from the only item on the industry's to-do list, which also includes challenges ranging from driver safety and security to decarbonisation. For over 70 years, IRU, the International Road Transport Union, has been the voice of the industry. And today it represents more than 3.5 million companies operating mobility and logistics services in over 100 countries. So who better to talk to us today than Raluca Marion, Director of EU Advocacy and the IRU's General Delegate to the Permanent Delegation to the EU. Now to hear Raluca's update on the current challenges, outlook and opportunities for the road transport industry, please click on the Up Next tab on her session and click Enter the Room and then we'll be able to begin. Just a reminder, there'll just be a minute or two whilst we wait for everybody to join. Raluca, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And it's my pleasure to hand over to you for your presentation. So good afternoon again for those of you who have joined in the meantime. Uh, my name is Raluca Marian. I am uh, the uh, director for um, EU advocacy at IRU. This is the International Road Transport Union. Uh, for those of you who do not uh, know very well the organization, um, IRU is the uh, global voice of road transport operators. Um, we are representing uh, goods transport, passenger transport on road. Uh, so this means trucks, buses, coaches, and also taxis. Um, we are in Brussels. I'm the head of the Brussels organization, uh, the uh, Brussels section of, uh, of IRU. And um, in Brussels, we are uh, the voice of the road transport sector in the European Union. And uh, we represent, of course, the interest of our sector in um, discussions with uh, the European Parliament, the European Council, so the EU legislators and the European Commission. Um, so very happy to, uh, to, be here, uh, to be here today and uh, to have the opportunity to discuss some of the uh, very recent challenges of our sector, uh, but also uh, opportunities that we see in the future and uh, what are the best ways to address the challenges that, uh, that we see. Uh, again, the uh, title of the presentation today is Driving to a Green, Safe Future. Uh, there will be no PowerPoints. I think in the, it's in the best uh, interest to have a very um, uh, fluid and fluent discussion here and uh, without any need to, uh, to show you something in writing that you may uh, already know. Uh, so uh, talking about challenges, um, we have, and that's not only our sector, uh, the entire economy and even us as persons, as persons we have uh, just come uh, out or in some instances, we are not even out yet of one of the most major um, crises, which is the COVID crisis. What this meant for our, what did this mean for our sector, for the road transport sector, that uh, so that that brought us in front of uh, very and confronted us with very important um, uh, challenges. It saw the limitation even of the European Union as a whole, um, with borders being established uh, overnight, with uh, facilities not being uh, available or. Um, uh, not being adequately equipped anymore for drivers, and I mean here even uh, parking facilities, um, and uh, even access to the most basic and elementary uh, facilities on the motorways. So um, this um, severely hit our sector and blockages in some uh, sectors of the economy uh, also caused uh, massive um, economic losses to some segments um, of, our, of our sector. We had entire segments like construction uh, or, um, uh, let's say, uh, flower production, which is a big activity in some parts of the uh, of Europe. Um, or um, uh, apart from retail, basically, uh, there are many months apart from retail activities like um, 
uh, supermarkets, of course, and uh, some other types of uh, essential facilities, medical care, uh, medical transport for medical care. A lot of um, activities have even stopped for months. So this has severely um, hit our our sector and also on the passenger side, um, as, as you are all aware, um, transport basically stopped and only essential uh, workers uh, were still able to uh, to travel across Europe. So uh, coach activities, um, taxi activities were also halted for a long time and they are still uh, struggling to recover. Um, this has created very uh, various other problems apart from the actual uh, economic impact on the sector. And um, this brings me to uh, the first word in the title of my presentation, which is driving. We said driving to green, safe future. In order to drive, you need drivers. And one of the effects of this crisis, which was quite surprising for, for us, was um, an increase in the driver shortage. And um, that's something which um, had to do with the fact that many people had to leave the profession. And um, also uh, when, when the activity resumed and the economy was uh, back there, at least for, for uh, freight transport, um, they had difficulties to, um, uh, to get these additional drivers. In, in addition, um, there were problems with training. So um, training was delayed, um, driving license, uh, uh, exams were postponed because of the COVID conditions. So the rhythm of people uh, entering the profession was slowed down. So that also aggravated. Um, you could see uh, the biggest impact, for example, in the UK. And uh, the press has been full, full lately of news regarding uh, the, the dramatic driver shortage in, in the UK. And there, on top of these general conditions that I just mentioned, was also Brexit and the, part, the fact that the part of the drivers uh, left the country. Um, but a driver shortage is, um, of course, it was um, a bit uh, amplified by the COVID effect, let's say, but that's not a, uh, uh, a, a new problem uh, in the EU. And um, I would like to, to start with that. And um, it's... For many times, it's been said that uh, driver shortage has to uh, do with uh, money and remuneration. And um, in our experience, um, we have noticed that, okay, money is important. Money is important for all of us, but that's not everything. And that's not the root cause of the problem. So um, what we would see as the root cause of the problem is conditions. Driver, the image of the profession, but the image of the profession, which is caused by uh, precarious conditions. And um, coming back to COVID and linking it to the COVID, um, COVID um, created a very paradoxical situation. On the one hand side, um, truck drivers in particular became the hero of the roads and uh, everybody became aware of that sector and the importance of the sector in running the economy. And on the other hand side, everybody became aware of what I just said in the beginning of my presentation, which is uh, the lack of facilities on the motorways, problems with parkings and uh, simply poor working conditions. So um, that's again, it has been it has been seen along it has been seen during Corona, but it has been also a long standing uh, problem for for drivers and one of the root causes. Um, now, looking at solutions, because uh, as, a, as a sector and as representatives for this sector, um, we uh, uh, like to identify the problems or listen to, to our members and uh, see the problems, but also look at the solutions. There are, uh, because of the causes you can, and the multiple causes, you can also identify um, several solutions. Now, uh, one of the solutions and also relevant for, uh, I think, for the audience today is uh, parking areas, because, as I said, driving conditions, uh, conditions for drivers are um, uh, can be very bad. There, there are there is a number of 300,000 parking places in the EU and um, there are 100,000 parking spots missing. So uh, that's a huge number. And um, we are talking about parkings in general. When I talk about parkings, I mean parkings in general, a place where you can officially park and not on the side of the motorway, as you sometimes see. Um, however, if we look at um, 
safe and secure parking areas, there now, currently there is a number of 7,000 safe and secure truck parking areas in the EU. And um, that's definitely a dramatically low figure. Uh, in general, the lack of parkings is a big problem, but lack of safe and secure truck parking areas is also um, very, very, uh, a very important issue to address. Um, we, are, we are very happy to see that probably also due to the COVID pandemic, uh, more attention has been uh, granted to, to this aspect. Um, as probably you, you, you all know, the standards for parkings are... Um, um, are now being uh, revisited by the EU and uh, the 10 uh, legislation will be um, uh, also uh, modified soon and there will be a draft 10 regulation uh, which will uh, uh, be published in December as part of at, or at the same time with more generally the, the um, urban uh, mobility framework. Uh, 14th of December we will see the draft and hopefully, and that's something we also um, uh, lobbied quite a lot to, to see in this legislation, and from what we hear, it will be there, there will be an obligation for member states to make sure that there is um, at least one safe and secure truck parking areas every 100 kilometers. Uh, so this level of obligation is um, already a progress, and combined with um, the EU funding, which is available for safe and secure parking, um, we that we believe that this will not solve the problem, that's for sure, but is um, a very good step forward. And when I speak about funding, um, IRU together with the unions, uh, to ETF, the Unions for Road, um, we have um, advocated for several years for uh, funds and the deployment of EU funds for the building of safe and secure truck parking areas. And uh, we are very happy to see uh, 250 million euros um, being part now of uh, calls, EU calls for SEP funding and uh, also funds under the um, cohesion um, uh, cohesion budget. And uh, the projects are, can now it's it's the time to, to submit the projects for safe and secure truck parking areas. The call I think will close in January. So um, we hope to see um, a lot of good projects there and a good number of parkings being uh, built. And we also uh, hope that the standards for or the new standards for the uh, truck parking uh, areas will uh, uh, have improved security. Um, and we, because also we saw, and that's also quite recent experience, it has always been there, but um, a recent experience shows that um, there have been major um, issues with uh, uh, safety and security of drivers with a number of very uh, dramatic incidents uh, this year of, of drivers drivers being robbed and attacked, even in parking areas, but not safe and secure um, uh, during this year. So uh, we hope that um, good standards for parking will uh, also have, uh, help address uh, this issue. Uh, this brings me now to the next, um, uh, to the next uh, part, which is uh, green. Uh, so driving to a green and safe future. Um, green means green deal. <laughs> so the green deal um, was is, is one of the biggest ambitions of the uh, of the European Commission. And we saw recently uh, as, a, as the sector, um, we, we saw ourselves at the core of the um, uh, EU legislative reform uh, grouped under the Fit for 55 package. Uh, there are several um, uh, several reforms or proposals under the package which directly um, uh, which directly impact our our sector um, the uh, revision of the uh, alternative fuel infrastructure directive to become a regulation so the level of, um, uh, of, of, of the power of the law will will, will be bigger um, then there is the energy taxation and also the the um, uh, ETS for roads, so the inclusion of road uh, for the purpose of the emission trading systems. Um, that's these are the three pieces of legislation which so far were identified as being the most um, uh, the most uh, or the most directly linked uh, to our sector, and of course with a number of other uh, pieces of legislation such as the renewable uh, 
uh, energy directive also being or the revision of the uh, uh, CO2 standards for cars and vans being also very uh, important for, for our sector. Um, as, a, as a main message there and perhaps with a focus on the alternative fuel infrastructure, um, on the alternative fuel infrastructure, we can be only happy as an industry um, to see that there is, uh, an, uh, there is a commitment of the EU and uh, pressure placed on member states to build infrastructure for alternative fuels. Uh, as a sector, we uh, do need alternatives and um, there are different technologies, there are different types of technologies which are, as it currently stands, best fit, best fit for um, various types of transport. So uh, we, are, we are very happy to see um, that um, uh, there is this proposal, but now we have to, we are looking with intense, with um, let's say some level of concern that member states um, would not dilute the level of commitment. Um, interestingly enough, in the alternative fuel infrastructure, there is also a uh, direct link with uh, safe and secure truck parking areas. Um, I'm not sure how many of you uh, have spotted it, but we were very happy to see that. Um, so there, and we look at the AFIR, so the Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Regulation, in con um, connect connected with the TNT. So we see the two in parallel because um, the Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Regulation sets out, as it currently stands, we'll see what comes out. As it currently stands, it sets out a um, uh, an an um, obligation for uh, member states to um, um, make sure that there is an infrastructure for electric charging of uh, heavy duty vehicles in every safe and secure truck parking area. Now, if we combine that with the 10T, we see that um, uh, under the 10T, there will be, um, as I already mentioned, a minimum number of uh, uh, safe and secure truck parking areas. So combining the two, we, we see quite, quite a nice picture for, uh, for the future. Um, what we see even uh, more important, um, immediately important, because uh, again, we are looking at the current technology and of course we are on, the, on, on a good way to develop new technologies and manufacturers are working on that. But at the moment, uh, if we sp speak about zero emission tailpipe, uh, most of zero emissions tailpipe are currently available uh, in the short range, so urban and regional de um, uh, deliveries, because they are mainly uh, available for smaller types of uh, vehicle, or let's say the technology is most mature uh, for the smaller types of vehicles, whereas for, whereas for heavy duty vehicles, so uh, the big vehicles, especially if we look at the 40 tons, uh, there is still a lot of uh, room to invest and to progress because, um, of course, a, a battery of six, seven tons um, with a, uh, a vehicle of uh, uh, 40 tons on a vehicle of 40 tons takes a lot of the loading capacity and the autonomy is not great at the moment. So, um, but again, when we talk about infrastructure, we look at the future and we hope that the future will bring uh, something good. Um, but what, what um, is very important for safe and secure truck parking areas is also to have infrastructure for the charging of refrigerated trucks. So that, that could save also a lot of environment because it would, um, it would uh, let's say, um, take away this burning of the fuel just to keep the, the, the cooling system on, uh, on the truck. So that's also something that we would like to see in the standards uh, for, for uh, safe and secure truck parking areas. Um, so that's um, uh, just in a nutshell what what we, uh, we what we would like to um, uh, what we see and what's relevant let's say for the uh, audience today uh, under the um, uh, the new package. Of course, as a sector, uh, more generally, we would like to uh, see especially the taxation and, and charging under the new legislation to see it also. Um, uh, let's say. Um, draft it as an incentive and not only as a, a penalization for the sector. So uh, what do we mean by that is that where the technology is not uh, really available, when we only, or the manufacturers only anticipate 70,000 electric trucks to be um, uh, marketed in 2025, and we have 7 million trucks on the road, um, have increasing massively the level of taxation and charges 
already in 2025 would on a de facto level mean a penalization for our sector and a huge increase of the cost base uh, without basically the possibility to switch to alternatives, where th the main reasoning of the new legislation is that this new taxation and charging framework is supposed to push to a change to an alternative. Or if you do not have yet the alternative, it's not a push to a change, it's just a penalization. So th that's just to, to give you a, a flavor of the broader picture and uh, what what we would like to uh, to see readjusted in the um uh in this in this framework um and now uh, talking about um uh, safety i've already mentioned in the in the context of safe and secure truck parking areas that uh safety of drivers is um um is an issue uh for us and that we we would like to uh it's an it's an issue in the sense an issue which has to be addressed and um that, that we see an opportunity in the safe and secure truck parking areas to uh, to address that. Um, there, there is an impressive uh, number of, um, uh, of, of, of goods and a, let's say a quantity of goods and impressive number of uh, robberies taking place on the um, EU uh, motorways every year. Um, and just to uh, perhaps end up with, uh, so uh, end my presentation with that, um, because we, as IRU we are so much aware, um, uh, TAPA EMEA and IRU Academy, that's a section of um, IRU which um, deals with uh, uh, projects and certification and uh, driver um, safety. Uh, so TAPA EMEA and IRU Ac Academy um, are, are working to get together to produce a driver security training. And there are several modules that um, that we are looking at. Um, one of them, and the first one being security threats, but also uh, secure route planning, secure transport procedures, incident reporting, and extreme criminal acts. So um, obviously, as an organization, we are very much aware of that. And uh, we are very happy to have the opportunity of a very good partner uh, to team up with and find some solutions for these uh, very big threats and issues for our sector. Thank you very much. Raluca, thank you so much for, for your presentation. Um, really interesting, thank you. I've got just a couple of minutes for a few questions, so we'll just get through those, that would be great if you could answer a couple. Um, you spoke about uh, driver shortages, of course. What more should industry be doing to build a larger driver community, do you think? Um, as, as I mentioned, there are um, several causes for that. And when we look at solutions, we have to look at causes. Um, I've already mentioned driver conditions and parking areas. Uh, there are also um, other, other very important, um, um, let's say, uh, uh, segments of the driving which have to be addressed. One of them is the loading and unloading points. Um, the, the, the excessive um, waiting times at the uh, loading and unloading uh, points is a big issue and we see there and digitalization a very important tool in order to address that. A more transparent environment whereby and more digital environment whereby information on where trucks are in traffic but also availability and delays at the um, uh, shipping points uh, these are um, uh, could be a very important tool to address that. As uh, as IRU, we are part of the um, uh, Digital Transport and Logistics Forum, which is a forum initiated by the EU and which looks exactly at these kind of digital tools to uh, to improve, um, let's say. Uh, traffic and transparency. And another thing also loading and unloading is the conditions, uh, the, the, drive, the treatment of drivers and loading and unloading points. And um, again, as IRU, we had the, an initiative um, on which then we worked with the unions on a EU level and then also on the international level and with the Shippers Council. And we issued a charter uh, which looks at the treatment of drivers and loading at, at loading and unloading uh, points and sets out a number of principles uh, to to be to be followed by shippers in order to um, assure um, let's say decent and human conditions to drivers at uh, at these points. Thank you. Um, 
when we look at female drivers, how can we encourage more women to consider a driving career? Um, yeah, so that's that's a problem of the, uh, as I mentioned, is the image of the um, uh, of the profession. So of course, addressing all these causes and um, uh, improving the conditions for drivers will also uh, perhaps uh, make uh, this profession more appealing to uh, to women because having to, sorry to say that, share toilets with men on the motorways and um, uh, then the, the, the fact that uh, uh, they, they are not treating very, very, very decently in, in many places doesn't, uh, doesn't help. So improving this kind of general awareness on the treatment in, of, of drivers in general, but also female drivers could, uh, could address it. Because what some, something which has to be kept in mind is that um, uh, truck driving is not only about long distances. So it, when it's about combining um, and making the best, let's say, also for private life and professional life, there are several segments which can be good for everybody. So uh, about 70% of, of, of goods transport is local and regional, which allows people to come back home at night. So, yeah, uh, image of the profession and improving the image would be definitely a major factor in attracting more people, including women, to the profession. And we've just had a, a comment uh, following following what you've been speaking about, saying that shippers should be doing much more to make waiting times of drivers more convenient and comfortable. Yes, yes, fully, fully agreed. And uh, it's the waiting time and the ba the basic treatment of drivers at the at the ship uh, at the at the shippers loading unloading places. Yeah. Fully agree. Um, We've got two questions. We might just get to one. Let's see. Uh, we see a massive infrastructure challenge in, in Europe, particularly in relation to secure parking. Um, the EU is working to address this, as is Tapamir with its parking security requirements, industry standard. But is it going to take a very long time for supply to match demand? And in your opinion, what practical steps can be taken in the near to midterm to accelerate the growth of secure truck parking? Yeah, so um, as I said, it, um, there is, and, and that's definitely building parkings, a lot of them, it, 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 it has to do a lot with money and, and financing and budgets. And as I already said during my presentation, uh, we, we are very happy to see short term, and that's short term, it's, it's money which will be made available by the EU next year. Uh, is to have as uh, short term to have as much funding as possible for building safe and secure truck parking areas. Uh, will 250 million be sufficient to uh, fill in the need for safe and secure truck parking areas in the EU? Definitely not. But it's um, what what matters, and that's also short term and medium term. We have to keep this momentum because we had the COVID, because this sector was so prominent during the COVID, we have to keep the momentum and remind people that if they want the economy to keep moving, we need to uh, look at the drivers and improve their conditions, including by uh, building safe, taking care of their security and, in, and having safe and secure truck parking areas. And that shouldn't be only on EU effort. It has to be with member states. And how do you keep that momentum, do you think, then? by uh, uh the, the press is doing a good thing is doing a good job i must say because all, all this press puts a lot of pressure on politicians and uh honestly we are grateful to to the press that they pick this topic and 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 bring it up so prominently and then um iru but also our members we have um uh, federations and companies members in all eu member states uh, and then they they do exactly the same thing on a national level we have to keep reminding politicians about this big threat, basically, for the economy, which is the lack of drivers. Fantastic. Well, Ruluka, we um, are right at the end of, of our time for, for your presentation. Thank you once again. Um, thank you. Very interesting and enjoyable presentation. And thank you for being with us today.